A tax freight train is bearing down on your retirement. To protect yourself, you'll have to harness the power of zero. Hello there, David McKnight uh, here with the Power of Zero show. Hope you're doing great. Thanks for carving off uh, a little portion of your day to learn more about the Power of Zero paradigm. Once again, I am the best-selling author of The Power of Zero, Look Before You Lerp, and The Volatility Shield. And I'm happy to report that uh, coming in January of 2021, I've just signed a acceptance offer with Penguin Random House to do a follow-up book on the power of zero. Um, it's going to really uh, draw everything into one unified strategy so that you understand exactly how all your money is going to be worked working in a co cohesive and unified way to get you to the 0% tax bracket, to help you mitigate uh, tax rate risk, longevity risk uh, in a very, very satisfying and unified way. Uh, so you're really going to want to uh, look out for that. Unfortunately, these things just take a really long time. Um, I'll probably have the book finished in the next couple months. It's already completely outlined. I know exactly what every chapter says. But uh, Penguin Random House, um, they're, they're a big five publisher and they move at a snail's pace, which I suppose is good because they don't want to just throw something out there after uh, having worked on it for a month. They're very methodical and they want to make sure that everything's perfect before they uh, they roll it out to the world. So be looking for that uh, January uh, 2021. Of course, I'll be podcasting about a lot of what we talk about on that book between now and then. Um, if you are looking for copies of my book and my of any of my books, uh, be it Power of Zero, Look Before You Lerp or Volatility Shield. You can get those at powerzero.com forward slash books, powerzero forward, powerzero.com forward slash books. I would really love it if you gave me a follow on Twitter. It's at McKnight and Co, at McKnight and Co. And uh, last but not least, would love it if you uh, put some reviews of our books online. They really do help. They really do help people who are checking our books out online understand uh, that they need to take our book seriously because there are a lot of positive reviews. Oh, one other thing. Um, Doug Orchard, the director of Power Zero, the tax train is coming, is rolling out his, um, his offer to be able to buy bulk amounts of streamings of the movie. Uh, you can buy 400 at a time for $5 per, per stream. You can post those on your website. You can send them out to friends or clients or what have you, and they can actually listen or, or watch the movie. And as they watch the movie, your, your view count goes down. Then he lets you know when you hit about 50 or so. Uh, you can go to thetaxtrain.com, thetaxtrain.com to learn more about that. Well, we are in the new year, and with the new year, of course, come... Uh, important changes to the IRS tax code to income con uh, contribution limits to, um, sorry, to income limits, to contribution limits, to all the various thresholds that we have to know about when it comes to power of zero planning. Remember, when it comes to the power of zero, you have to know what these different thresholds are because you could violate a threshold on the one hand that forces you to pay a tax on the other hand. So you have to be keenly aware of all these little uh, pitfalls that are more like landmines, really, that are scattered all over the place. Of course, we're helped here to help you uh, circumnavigate those, those pitfalls and those landmines. First of all, let's start off with the Roth IRA. The, uh, the new income, the income threshold, uh, at which point your ability to contribute to Roth IRAs gets phased out. It's now uh, for a single person, it's 124 to 139. And for a married couple, it's 196 to 206. Uh, it's 196,000, 206,000. Now, remember how this works is let's say you're a married couple and you have income of um, 201,000 modified adjusted gross income. Okay. And uh, because you're halfway through that phase out range, remember it's 196 to 206, you are 5,000 into that $10,000 uh, phase out range. 
uh, your ability to contribute to the Roth IRA gets cut in half, okay, uh, both for you and for your spouse. So instead of being able to contribute uh, the seven thousand uh, dollars, you and your spouse would only be able to contribute thirty five hundred dollars each. That's how that phase out works. Um, so just be be aware of that as you're contemplating. I know it's it's tough to even figure out ahead of time what your contribution limit or what your income is going to be in a given year. The, the nice part about the Roth IRA is you have up until April 15th of the following year to figure out if you're going to contribute. Okay. So you can get a fair idea of what your modified adjusted gross income is going to be and whether you're violating any of these thresholds or not. I wish I could say it were that easy for the Roth conversion. Uh, with the Roth conversion, you have to decide whether you're going to do it before December 31st. And if you sort of guesstimate and, 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 and sometime in January say, man, I wish I didn't do that, you can no longer go back in time and change that. You can no longer um, go back and modify your tax return and recharacterize that Roth conversion. So you have the, uh, you have the onerous task of trying to figure out if a Roth conversion is number one, something you should do. Number two, up to what income tax bracket should you uh, be converting in order to maximize that, that Roth conversion in any given year. Okay, let's move on to 401ks. This has changed a little bit. Uh, you can now, if you're younger than age 50, you can now contribute 19500 which is up uh, from 19000 in 2019, or you can contribute $26,000. Uh, if you're over age 50, that's up from twenty five in 2019. So these are positive things, especially when you consider that that applies to the Roth 401k as well. You can now contribute massive amounts of money to these tax-free vehicles, which I'm obviously encouraged that you do. Um, I'm, as you know, a big fan of Roth IRAs, Roth 401ks, Roth conversions, anything with the word Roth in them, I think is something you should take a look at. Uh, given what we talked about last week, we're marching into a financial apocalypse. I don't want to over try to overstate my case here, but we are marching into a future that looks very, very grim, very, very daunting, and very, very sobering. And, um, the, the least you can do is try to protect yourself from the impact of tax rate risk because tax rates are likely to rise dramatically even in the next 10 years. So make sure you're protecting yourself by taking advantage of many of these diversified streams of tax-free income as possible. All right, let's move on to the standard deduction. Standard deduction for single folks uh, went from twelve two to 12400 And for married couples, it went from $24,400 to $24,800. Now, remember what happens in 2026. In 2026, we are going to revert to uh, the tax code of 2017, which means that the personal exemption comes back, the standard deduction goes down. And uh, I, I wouldn't worry about this too much because remember in 2018, when we lost the personal, uh, personal, sorry, personal exemption and the standard deduction went up, the net benefit to you, the net increase in benefit to you of deductions was not all that much. The real benefit of the tax code came in the, um, the really the massive expansion of those lower tax brackets, um, being able to fit much more income into some of these lower to middle income tax brackets, meaning you save more when it comes time to doing Roth conversion. So my, my, uh, my, prognostication here is that come 2026, they will simply revert back to the standard deduction and the personal exemptions from 2017. They will index them both for inflation to cover those eight years, and you will end up with standard deductions and personal exemptions roughly equal to what the standard deduction would have been had they simply extended it from 25, 2025 to 2026. I wouldn't lose too much sleep over that. Uh, of course, you still get an additional standard deduction if you are full retirement age, so that gets even better. And if you were blind, you also get that same deduction. And none of those, none of those uh, have changed. Very, very important that you understand what's going on with the RMDs. Okay. Um, previously, we know the RMD was uh, you had to draw your RMD by. April 1st, following your 70 and a half year. Uh, now it's, it's moved back to age 72. So what does that mean? That means you have to draw 
your RMD by April 1st, following the year in which you turn 72. What does that mean? That means that you are, for all intents and purposes, you're postponing, uh, you're postponing those RMDs for two years. This is going to not be a big deal for people who really need the money. In other words, if you really need the money at age 70 and a half, you're, you are going to withdraw the money anyway at age 70 and a half. Where this becomes potentially uh, what could perceive to be a benefit is for people who don't need the money. Maybe that they get pensions and social securities that cover their lifestyle needs. They're not going to be forced to realize that income uh, during those two years they might otherwise have. However, you got to remember what the flip side here is. The flip side is that there are their IRAs could be even bigger by the time they draw those down and the rate at which they're going to force you to draw those down is going to be even bigger. Uh, and if it's two years further into the future, I think that's two years more likely that tax rates could be higher for you. Um, so whereas previously when you were in your 70 and a half year, you were taking money at 3.65%, you are now going to be forced to take money at three point. I'm rounding up here. I think it's about 3.906. I'm rounding up to 3.91%. So you're going to be forced to take 3.91% of your IRAs and 401ks uh, by April 1st, following the year in which you turn 72. So they're going to force you to take more out. Your IRA will have grown to a larger amount. There's a higher likelihood that taxes could be higher. Uh, down the road. So I don't know quite how to interpret this for you. Uh, you may be thinking, hey, this is great news. I don't know. Um, I, I just know that the when you are going to be taking this out, you're going to be taking out a higher percentage on probably a higher amount of money, potentially with higher taxes. All right. We also know that the uh, the stretch IRA has been abolished. You, your non-spouse beneficiaries, meaning your children, are going to be forced to spend down your IRAs and 401ks and Roth IRAs in the 10 years following your death. This is a huge deal. We've talked about it in past podcasts. Uh, all the more reason why you should be uh, shifting money into tax-free accounts like Roth conversions and life insurance. Because even if they're forced, uh, first of all, the life insurance, they won't be forced to spend that down. But a Roth conversion, when they inherit that, even if they are forced to take it, uh, spend it down, they could then contribute uh, it to their own IRA, Roth IRAs, their own uh, LIRPs, what have you, um, and continue to get tax-free growth on that. And they're not going to have to pay taxes on top of all their other income at the apex of their earning years. So get paid taxes at your historically low tax rates so that they don't have to pay taxes at their historically high tax rates over a 10-year period of time. Remember, if you have a million dollars growing at 6.5% per year, and they have to spend that, your kids have to spend that down in 10 years, that's about $125,000 per year. If they were really trying to spread that tax liability out over 10 years, $125,000 per year over 10 years. Uh, big deal. So make sure you're on top of your Roth conversions. Uh, if you believe the tax rates today are... Uh, lower than they will be in the future. We also know that you can now contribute to, to IRAs after age 70 and a half. So for those of you who love to take advantage of the backdoor uh, Roth conversion, where you're uh, contributing a non-deductible contribution to your IRA and then converting it to a Roth IRA in the, with the stroke of a pen, maybe the very next day, uh, you can now do that after age 70 and a half. You couldn't do that before. You could always contribute to, a lot of people thought you couldn't contribute to a Roth IRA after 70 and a half. You could always contribute to a Roth IRA after 70 and a half. It was the IRA that you could not contribute to after 70 and a half, and now you can, Okay. Gift and estate tax exemption is now at $11.58 million per individual, up from $11.4 million in 2019. So um, keep in mind that these are some pretty rich benefits. Uh, to, to, and to think that under Reagan, uh, what was it, $625,000 was the estate tax exemption? And that was like... That was hardly anything back in the day. Uh, now you can contribute per couple. You know, we're talking $22, 23000000 million that you can pass on to the next generation 
without any estate tax at all, uh, that is a massive amount. This is, uh, I, th- I think, for all intents and purposes, a giveaway. Uh, I'm not sure that all of these rich tax benefits will persist given a change in administration in 2020. But remember what would have to happen is Democrats would have to get a hold of the, um, the House, the Senate, and the presidency to change a lot of this stuff. So is that possible? Certainly. But I think it would take a lot. I think it'd have to take a lot of alignment of the stars for that to happen. So it's, and I have people write me all the time, hey, Dave, you you know, you say tax rates won't change until 2026. What happens if, uh, you know, there's a change in regime, change in administration uh, in 2020? Well, certainly that can happen. I just think the likelihood of that happening is not very high especially given the numbers in the Republican Senate right now. Uh, Oh, one other thing, the uh, annual gift exclusion is holding steady at $15,000 for 2020, $15,000 per person. Uh, So between you and your spouse, you could contribute, um, if you do gift splitting, $30,000 to um, each person that you want to gift money to. Could be a kid, could be a cousin. Uh, could be a stranger, really could be anyone, uh, but that's $30,000 per couple. Now, um, will, h- how long will, you know, I think that, that these are all positive things. One, one question I really have for the IRS is why, for example, uh, do you raise uh, the contribution limits for the 401k, uh, $500 pre uh, age 50 or $1,000 uh, post age 50, yet you don't touch the Roth IRA contribution thresholds or limits. Um, I can't tell you, I, I don't know if the IRS is using some sort of algorithm behind the scenes to figure out what they should be doing. I do know that if they have n- not increased your ability to contribute to a Roth IRA, in my mind, what that tells me and I may be wrong on this, but what it, what I think it tells me is that the Roth IRA is a good thing. And I've talked about this in the Power of Zero, that any time the government puts limits on contributions to certain types of accounts, that tells me it's a good thing. They have not adjusted your ability to contribute to a Roth IRA to keep up with inflation. That tells me, and that should tell you, that Roth IRAs are good things. Okay. Uh, this is most of what you should know for 2020. I think these are uh, thresholds. If you're a financial advisor, I think these are all thresholds and, 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 and limits that you should be memorizing. Your clients deserve to know uh, exactly what these thresholds are. Um, and um, I think that if you, by understanding these thresholds, you can really maximize your contributions to these types of accounts. Remember, I love all things tax-free. My ideal approach to tax-free retirement says take advantage of all the tax-free streams of income that are available to you because they all have benefits and merits uh, that are unique to each each little bucket we're putting on the table here. Uh, 401, Roth 401ks have unique qualities that Roth conversions don't. Uh, LIRPs have unique qualities that uh, Roth IRAs don't. Uh, taking money out of your IRAs up to standard deduction and personal exemptions without causing Social Security taxation. Those tax-free uh, RMDs have um, merits and unique qualities that none of the other ones have. You got to be, remember, we're trying to fit pieces of a puzzle together to find the 0% tax bracket. As you put these puzzles of pieces together, pieces of puzzle together, uh, and they fit perfectly and seamlessly together, then the 0% tax bracket comes into focus. All right. That's the show for today, folks. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Uh, and again, if you need books, go to powerzero.com forward slash books. If you want to watch our movie, go to thetaxtrain.com. And of course, please follow me on Twitter and put reviews on Amazon. We would really love it if you did. Uh, we will talk to you next week. 